the Parisians awoke to the sound of all the bells, ringing a full peal. The 6th of January, 1482 was the double solemnity of the Epiphany and the Feast of Fools. So the crowd of citizens, male and female, thronged from every direction. This crowd directed their steps towards the mystery play, to be presented in the Grand Hall of the Palais de Justice midday. Le Mystère. Le Mystère. I am to play Jupiter. As soon as the Cardinal arrives, we will begin. Jupiter, begin at once. This mystery will be fine. Without doubt. I am the author of it, damsels. My name is Pierre Gringoire. His Eminence, Monseigneur the Cardinal de Bourbon. All heads turned towards the gallery. The unhappy prologue stopped short for the second time. Begin the mystery again! Begin again! That is what you call a mystery, but it is not amusing. I was promised a feast of fools, with the election of a pope. That's the way it is. Would you like to make your pope after the fashion of my country? All was ready. The little chapel was selected for the scene of the grinning match. A pane left free a circle of stone through which the competitors should thrust their heads. All geometrical forms, from the triangle to the trapezium, from the cone to the polyhedron, all human expressions, from wrath to lewdness, all ages, from the wrinkles of the newborn babe to the wrinkles of the aged, in a word, a human kaleidoscope. <laughs> the Pope of the Fools had been elected. Noel! 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 They made the lucky Pope of the Fools come forth in triumph and in the perfection of his ugliness, the populace recognized him on the instant, and shouted, "'Tis Quasimodo, the bell-ringer! Tis Quasimodo, the hunchback of Notre Dame!' "'Death, cross of God, he is a perfect pope!' "'He's deaf, and what does this Polyphemus do with his tongue?' "'He speaks when he chooses. He became the ruling in the bells. He is not dumb. They made him seat himself on a motley litter. Twelve officers of the fraternity of fools raised him on their shoulders. Then the ragged and howling procession set out on its march of the streets and squares. Suddenly shouted one of the young scamps from the window, La Esmeralda! La Esmeralda in the place! In a vast space left free between the crowd and the fire, a young girl was dancing. Jolly, it is your turn. At this moment the procession of the Pope of the Fools debouched on the place to grev, with all its torches and all its uproar. Gringor set out to follow the gypsy. After all, she must lodge somewhere. Gypsies have kindly hearts. Who knows? twist of toe soaked in oil, which burned in a cage permitted Gringor to make out the gypsy struggling in the arms of two men. One of the men who held the young girl turned towards him. 
It was Quasimodo. A cavalier appeared suddenly from a neighboring square. He tore the gypsy from the arms of the dazed Quasimodo. Quasimodo was surrounded, seized, garroted. His companion had disappeared during the struggle. What is your name? Monsieur Le Gendarme? Captain Phoebus de Chateaupay, at your service, my beauty. Thanks.